Shalom. All praise and glory to the mighty most high, our creator, who's one God. One. One. How's everybody doing? Hope you're all having a blessed, blessed day. Also, remember when we go out there in that world, we're among devils. We are among demons, folks. You're among beasts. You're among wild animals. You're among rapists and murderers. Could be standing right frickin' next to you, man. You don't know. There's many of them and they're everywhere. Okay? There are beasts on this plane of existence that were created on the sixth day of creation. You gotta snap out of it. Gentiles, you must turn back to the Creator, who's one God. You're not gonna make it into no kingdom of heaven. You'll be lucky if you make it on a new heaven on earth. I'm telling you straight up, it's time to wake up. <clears throat> Genesis 30. When Rachel saw that she had not bared Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister. Think anybody saw that coming? Really? Look how we are. I ask anybody that's, that's of the Spirit of God that has the Spirit of God on them, do you really believe that two sisters, even Hebrew women, the two sisters are going to be with the same, same man, the same husband? Wouldn't you agree that one of those sisters would would kind of be left out like in the other lessons? That's what's happening. You got to start thinking like this. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't have taken, I wouldn't have taken Leah as my wife if Rachel was the one that I was in love with, folks. So she said to Jacob, give me a child, give me children or I shall die. Hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I was going to say what the next line is. Jacob became angry with her and said, Am I in the place of God? Hmm, that makes sense to me. How is it that she's going to die unless God allows her to die? So she spoke out of line when she said that I will die. Am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Jacob? Um, Jacob didn't keep her from having children. Right? Everything is to the glory of God. So if you're not having children, it's because the Lord doesn't want you to have children. It's that simple. It's that simple, folks. If the Creator doesn't want you to have children, you're not going to have children. You try going around the, the Creator's back and popping prenatal drugs and doing all that stuff, the only thing that you're going to bring into this world is a mentally dysfunctional, maybe a Siamese twin, a conjoined baby, or something that's an abomination. That's what you're going to get. That's how God punishes you. If you go off to war and you kill somebody, man, God might just blow your legs off and let you go through the rest of your life with no legs. And then, and it's only after that that you realize you got the screwed end of the deal. When your legs are missing, folks, when you got limbs that are missing in the army, man, you got to understand exactly what the word soul dies. Soldier. How come soldier is spelt S-O-L-D-I-E-R, but uh, aperture is spelt with the T-U-R? Amateur is T-U-R-E. Uh, all these different uh, temperature. Soldier. How come soldier isn't T-U-R-E? Why is it spelt? I'm teaching you guys, if people are listening, that soldier means that your soul dies when you go off to war. When you go to kill people, you're not to shed, shed blood, folks. You're not to kill. There is no reason or an excuse for anybody to kill their brother. Unless you're wanting something that they have. And that's what our government, America, they love that. They love taking things and resources from other countries. They, they love uh, damming up water and stuff and then... And then creating dams and creeks and canals and stuff and, and putting us all out in the middle of the desert so that when shit all falls south of the border, there you are, dead in the city, and that's what's going to happen. You guys are going to really, you're going to be waiting for the government to help you out, and they're the ones that are causing all this. Then she said, Here is Billa, my servant. Sleep with her so that she can bear children for me and I can build a family through her. Wow. I guess that would be, for me, back in that time, that would be, you know, walking, if this is walking a line with God and, and, and 
um, wives can give their servants and their slave girls, and boy, I'd only be hoping, hey, I hope she's fine. Yeah. No, nah, because if if uh, some cow was sent on the way, as if Billa was a cow, and some, you know, and, and here, sleep with my, my mate, my uh, servant, Billa. No, I'm not going to do it. So clearly, but as a man, uh, looking at women that are gorgeous and beautiful, man, you can just you can just line them up for me. Well, you could have. You used to be able to line them up for me. I would have tried to take every one of them out if I could. But uh, you know that's that's crass, but it's the truth. Okay, I got sin and iniquity on my back, and this is how you got to learn to talk to the Lord, man. You got to be full of shame for your crimes against Him. Oh, and I and I don't see this going well later on in the Bible either. You know, sleep with my servant Billa. Okay, Jacob slept with her, and she became pregnant and bore him a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. He has listened to me and given me a son. Because of this, she named him Dan. Okay, let me be very clear for you folks. Uh, it's not her son. Do you understand? It's Jacob and Billa's son. Okay? It's not Rebecca, it's not Rachel's son. That's twisted. Sleep with my husband. That's fornication. Oh, he he she was made a wife. So he did take her as a wife. I don't know, man. Shit, man, I'd move to Utah. If I believed that polygamy was was not against the Lord, uh, then shit, I'd, I'd move to Utah and I'd have all kinds of women laid up on, the, uh, on, on my farm. Right? Shit. That is a man's dream, folks, to have as many women as he likes. You know, just line them up. This woman here married this woman here. All these kings, they have all these multiple wives and stuff. They're fornicating pumping out the children, right? Rachel's con uh, servant conceived and gave Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, I have had a great struggle with my sister, and I have won. Now, to me, it sounds like a competition. Doesn't sound right, man. This story doesn't sound right. Two sisters together with one man sleeping with in the bed, you know, passing, being passed back and forth. Jacob loves Rachel. When I was in love, folks, I, I wouldn't have laid down with anybody. My heart was with that one uh, woman that I was with, man. I wasn't a cheater. I felt anything, but when I was single, I was a whore. That's all there is to it. And believe me, women threw themselves at me left and right. Uh... And I have won, she says. Really, like now it's a competition. How how awful. She named him Nephetali. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob to be his wife. Wow, so it just seems weird to me. I mean, in a modern day age to me, this sounds like fornication, huh? If it was that easy, I mean, shit, people should just start moving in with one another, man. You think, oh, your husband's fine, and you think my husband's fine, and I think you're fine, and I think you're fine, and we're all fine together and stuff. We might as well just move in and have us a big clique and, and change wives between us and have little orgies. And that's what it all sounds like to me, man. Here, take my, take my maid and lay down with her and fornicate. You know, have a baby, marry her. Shit, okay, man. If that's all you got to do is marry him, line up every gorgeous woman there was when I was 35 years old, man. I would have married them all. But what does the Lord say? You got to love them equally, man. Right? You don't. You don't ever love two women the same. There's always one that you like, you enjoy more than the other. There's always a pecking order. Don't fool yourself and say that you can love people equally. Everybody on this plane of existence has a pecking order, just like the Creator. He has a pecking order. You understand that? He has a pecking order. You better wake up to his pecking order. 
So she named him. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children and her servant Zilpah gave to Jacob to be his wife, Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, what good fortune. She, so she named him Gad. Leah's servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. How happy I am. The woman will call me happy. So she named him Asher during the wheat harvest. Reuben went out into the field and found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother, Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Wasn't it enough you took my husband? Oh, what does that sound like to me? Sounds like grief. Told you, man. Stuff ain't working out right. It's just grief. Folks, you took away my husband. Will you take my son's mandrakes too? Wow. I thought that these are loving, kind, tender, warm, gentle family members. All big one family. What's the problem? I think that they're all fornicating with one another. I think that's the problem. That's why everybody's having this discord between one another. <clears throat> this is why Homeboy has uh, will be at... Uh, uh, odds with all of the families. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. That's back a few chapters. Okay. Very well, Rachel said. He can sleep with you tonight in return for some of your son's mandrakes. Wow. So now Jacob has just, just been placed on a block like a piece of meat. You can sleep with my husband tonight. Give me some of your food. <sighs> really? You buying that? You buying that one woman would really tell another woman that you could sleep with my husband tonight? As jealous as people are and under the heads and, and just whacked out of their head, you really believe that a person is going to be able to give their wife, give, a, give away a woman? I mean, now there are some, a lot, in fact, on this plane of existence today, man. They, they're throwing it out there, straight up. They throw it out there. So when Jacob came home from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet. You must sleep with me, she said. I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. Wow. Hired in the Strong's Concordance is Sikar, or Sikar, 79.16 in the Strong's Concordance. And uh, I'm pretty sure that this uh, uh, Definition has been changed if you were to do the etymology on it and find out exactly what higher it is. Anytime you're talking about a J in the Bible, there's, it's questionable in the translation. That's what you got to understand that the J was added. Okay? It was only added. <clears throat> so he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah and she became pregnant and bore Jacob his fifth son. God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband. So she named him Asikar. Leah conceived and born him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Sometime later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God listened to Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph and said, May the Lord add to me another son. Well, it seems to me like Jacob is spitting out some kids. Now, he's, he's probably got about 12 kids. You know, plus, uh, um, that's a pretty high number. Picking up at uh, 25, Genesis 30, verse 30, 25, Jacob's flocks increase. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives and children for whom I have served you, and I will be on my way. So Jacob was a servant, folks. You know, when I read that, I mean, it seems to me like, yeah, he got he got something from for going to work with Laban. But it's like he said earlier, man. You know what he's saying now, send me on my way so I can do for my own children, right? Have served you. I will be on my way. 
You know how much I worked, I have done, and how much I have done for you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned through divination that the Lord bless me through you. So now, this blessing is is Laban, and I'm I'm leaning towards yes that Laban is a Gentile because the Creator said that the Gentile would be blessed through God's chosen children. So Laban's crops increased because of Jacob. Jacob said, you know I have worked hard for you and how your livestock have fared under my care. The little you had before I came has increased greatly. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when can I do something for my own household? He's ready to move on. He's got what he needs. He's ready to go. Right? Makes sense to me. Okay, Jacob. Yes. I have been. But now, when can I do something for my own household? What shall I give you? He asked. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you will do this one thing for me. To me, that's weird. Don't give me anything, but if you do this one thing for me. Don't give me anything, but if you do this one thing for me. That's split, huh? Don't give me anything, I'll be on my way. But Jacob had... Jacob's wills were probably spinning here too, how he can, you know, increase in prosperity. Or should I say wealth? Um, so Jacob says, don't give me anything, but if you will do one this one thing, I will go, and tend, go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from every speckled or spotted sheep every dark colored lamb and every speckled or spotted goat goat they will be my wages and my honesty will testify about me in the future whenever you have checked on the wages you have paid me any goat that is in my possession that is not speckled or any lamb that is not dark colored will be considered stolen agreed said laban let it be as you have said that same day he removed all the goats that were streaked and spotted and all the speckled and spotted female goats all that had white on them and all the dark colored lambs and he placed them in the care of his son <clears throat> then put then he put a three day journey between him and Jacob always three it's always three. Always a trinity, folks. Always. It's always three, man. Throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament, you're going to see that these numbers often, quite often, break down to six. It's always a six. It's always a three. It's always a six. It's always a three, man. It's always the same thing. All right. Then... He put that three days between them. Jacob continued to tend the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond, and plain, true, and put white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all of the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. They made it and in front of the branches, and they bore young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob set apart the young of the flocks by themselves, but he made the rest face the streaked and dark-colored animals that belonged to Laban. Thus he made it separately for himself and did not put them in Laban's animals. When all the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in front of the trough in the front of the animals so that they would mate near the branches. So what's he doing? He's being a little bit crafty here. He's placing these branches in front of his troughs the, of the, the animals that are in heat 
and not placing the branches in front of the other troughs where um, you're getting the color differentiation now between these animals. <clears throat> so he's he's doing something a little sneaky and crafty. You know, he's trying to build his flocks. He's trying to make his flocks stronger over his uh, over Laban's. Okay, when the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in front of the trough, in front of the animals, so that they would mate near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban, and the strong ones to Jacob. Now maybe this was a little bit of maybe this was a little bit of payback for the seven years that he gave to to uh, Laban the first seven years that he he snuck his first daughter in. I don't know how anybody's going to get me. You'll never get me to believe that a man that's waited on a woman for seven years, busted his hump, worked his fingers to the bones, doing everything that he possibly can because he loved this woman so much and believed that that Laban is going to be able to send his daughter Leah, Leah to uh, Jacob and Jacob not know who it is really bring me my wife I want to make love to her come on what she wrapped up in a shroud with the little clippings out so he could get to it here baby you see what I'm saying it doesn't make sense don't forget man I'm a drug addict I'm an ex-drug addict so when I when I talk I'm crass sometimes I'm a little bit too crass but I'm toning it down man I've toned it way down in all of my lessons but I still get strikes why because this is, this is what I'm teaching is, you know, it's just waking you guys up a little bit to, hey, man, this, this story does sound a little bit, you know, weird. It doesn't sound properly. Everything's, everybody seems to be doing anything. And, and where, where are all these, these uh, why do we have servants? Right? So Jacob wake, woke, he was, he was at one point in time, he wasn't one of the most richest people, but everything, God bless him. The creator blesses. But I, I just, I think that this is the plane of both good and evil. So yes, within the Gentile nations, there are still angels, because that's what we consider ourselves. I mean, I don't consider myself an angel. If, uh, I, if if you've fallen away from the Creator, then you're not you're not an angel. It's that simple. You're a demon, or you have demons on you, or if you place gods beside God, or if you lie, or you cheat, or you steal, or you're covering, or you're screwing your neighbor, man, or if you're going off to war and you're killing people and you're doing all these things that are an abomination and laying down man on man and woman on woman and everything that's an abomination. And you guys think that some, some, have you, tell me, I've read 30, uh, 25 chapters, or 30 chapters now to you guys. Uh, have you heard one mention about Jesus in any of this? I ain't heard anything about Jesus. I've heard a lot about the Lord, and I've heard a lot about a God, but I haven't heard anything about a Jesus. But you guys will try to say that let us, in Genesis 1, 26, 27, says, that that is talking about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, if it was talking about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then explain to me when it says, then God. See? Then God said, let us make mankind in our image so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle of the land, and everything that creeps upon the face of the earth. All right? And then God said, let us. And then God. And then God. It doesn't say then God. God let us. They say it's the Trinity. But then it says God, God alone underneath. It doesn't say in the Trinity, let us make mankind in our image. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit made man in his image. It simply said, goes right back to God. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image so that they may rule over the fish in the sea. 27 says, so God made mankind in his image and in the image of God. So God made mankind. You see, God, there ain't a, there is no Trinity there, man. This, this Bible is wordcraft, and there's a lot of it in it. And I'm deciphering this, and I'm getting it down, and I'm getting stronger and better with each chapter that I write down and I read. It's beautiful this way. This is a this is a long project that I'm taking on. It's not for anybody other than the Spirit of God and me working for my own salvation. And even if I completed this entire these entire lessons and wrote the entire 
a Bible down for all of you, that still doesn't, to me, doesn't promise me a spot in even the new, new heaven on earth, if there's going to be a new heaven on earth. So, okay, so, J so Jacob did a little bit of craftiness here, man, by getting certain animals, setting the animals up where they're eating the branches from the trough, and he's got strong animals that are mating. Little sly there, okay? Um, but if the animals were weak, then he'd send them to, to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, they grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and the female and male and female and male servants <clears throat> and camels and donkeys. What are they breeding? Uh, female and male servants too, along with the flock of the sheep. Is there enslaved servants? I keep trying to tell you, the only thing that anybody should be serving on this plane of existence is the spirit. If you are serving a man of any kind, okay, you are not serving the spirit. That goes for Hebrew men as well. That goes for Gentile. It goes for everybody on this plane of existence. You do not bow down to anything but the Spirit of God. You bow in privacy in your room, behind the closet, anywhere you want, closed doors. You, the Lord, the self-existing eternal one, one on one. Okay? Set that God, Jesus Christ, aside. He's going to drag you to the eternal flames. Jesus holds the keys to death in Hades. Christians will tell you that he holds the keys to death in Hades so that he can let those souls that have fallen, that are in sin right now, out. Those, you see, when you die in your sins, you go to hell, folks. When you die in your sins, you go to hell. And we're taught that if you worship Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ is going to hold the keys and he's going to let you out at resurrection, at judgment time. But the Lord, the Spirit, says that there is no mediators between him, okay? You got to go straight to the source, right? Doesn't it make sense? If you had a bunch of brothers, man, your brothers are all telling you, oh, you got to come to me to talk to dad, man. Well, I'll, work, I'll take care of you, we'll, right? Keep you off this side. Not keep you so much where you want to be in your dad's favor and stuff, but your older brothers are all pushing you and misdirecting you and trying to guide you and t telling you to go down to the shop and get some blue steam, you know, grab a left-handed monkey wrench, all that shit, you know, anything you can, go jump off a bridge, all that shit, yeah. So he had male servants, man, so Jacob is prospering, and we're getting to a story, the part of the story about Pineal. And I know this story well. There's going to be a lot of information that comes at you at this part of the story. So let's hold on. All praise and glory to the mighty most high, our creator is one God. Bow your heads and let's pray. <clears throat> our creator, the spirit which moves all things in place, there is none like you. You stand alone at your throne, by yourself, alone, and no one behind you. I submit to you all that I am. Every cell, every fiber that comprises me of flesh and every ounce of blood that pumps through my veins, I humbly lay down before you. I kneel in private. I cry out to you in shame, sorrow, grief. I have transgressed your laws, your commandments. Walk contrary to you and surely on that day I will pay. Please, I only ask today, Lord, that I may do what is required of me so that I can balance my skills. Please, Lord, let me save souls. Let people hear this message. Let me find Christians, Gentiles that want to turn back. Gentiles that haven't haven't got it, Lord. I call on you. You're the one. You're in control of everything. There is no gods beside you. Therefore, Satan can't exist. If Satan existed, it's in the creation of mankind, those that were created on the sixth day. I bow to you, please, Lord. If I was a beast created for the fire, I beg you to place your spirit upon me. I beg you to place your spirit upon anyone that may be listening to this message all the way to the end. Let them find favor and praise with you, my creator, the self-existing eternal one, the almighty one. There is none beside you to the left and none to the right and none that sit on the right hand of authority. I beg you for forgiveness. I ask all these things only in your almighty presence, my creator, a spirit. This is... White Raptor News Ministries. Shalom.